The first thing you should know about my friend Andrew is that he wishes people were like cars. I know this because he's told me this. If everyone could just stay in their lanes, obey the rules of polite society, and not touch, Andrew would be happy. Especially the part about not touching. When vehicles and traffic make contact of any kind, it's an accident. It's often a tragedy. And Andrew feels the same way about human contact. The next thing you should know about Andrew is that he's about to get married. God bless you, Delaney, and good luck. <laughs> You should you should know as well as anyone. You taught at a Catholic school. Uh, Delaney and my relationship is very chaste. I know. Good, good luck. The first thing you should know about my friend Mrs. Philholm is that she's joyful. She likes to laugh and make snow angels and post ceramic discs around Denver with encouraging messages on them. Just look at her Instagram. It's full of this stuff. It seems like the camera's always caught her in the middle of a great, full-hearted laugh. The next thing you should know is that Mrs. Philholm has such childlike joy because she is a child. Though she complains about old person stuff like wrinkles and hemorrhoids, these complaints are red herrings meant to distract from her delightful, albeit goofy, childlike tendencies of turning cartwheels, talking in cartoon voices, and making mud pies. <laughs> Welcome to Half My Age, a weekly show in which a 25-year-old adult and a 50-year-old child help each other make sense of the world. Yeah, it's about right, isn't it? <laughs> but I pay my mortgage, Andrew. That seems grown up. You do pay your mortgage. I have been shoveling so much snow all by myself. It's it's funny that that's the thing that uh, people point to as being an adult thing. I know, and I, I remember. I don't think, I don't think my parents did it uh, as much as as much as television parents do it. But there's always the once you once you start paying the bills, then you can have an opinion or whatever. Right. right. Uh, or you know, I'm so stressed because of this because of this mortgage. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's very funny that that. Uh, the adulthood is defined by large bills. Yeah. Oh, right. I know. Right. It <laughs> totally is. It's shorthand for all of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I, a, a friend of mine, a comic, wrote a joke, and I would never steal somebody else's joke, so his name is Phil Corridor. But he just posted this. He said, my father just bought me a house. And he's of the right age that that might be happening for him. Mm -hmm. And he said... You, listen up, Mom and Dad. Buy me a house. Uh, and then he said, I feel funny about it, but you have to live in the present. <laughs> Get it? His dad didn't buy him a house. That's just a really funny little joke. I uh, I didn't know you liked puns like that. You have to live in the present. You have to I live in... appreciate puns so much. I don't. That's, I don't that's so a... so dangerously close to a dad joke that I would make that I can't believe that you're you you. It's a joke you love. It's pretty. It's pretty subtle. It actually takes a second. You have to live in the present, the present of a house from your father. Exactly. But I mean, to the point that he posted on Facebook and I saw people saying to him, you know, like, oh, congratulations. That's so great for you. And it's like his dad didn't buy him a house. So that's why I think it's fun. Listen, as we've talked about, I like unexpected. Of course, I like puns. My brain does not think like puns in puns. And if you sit around with me at dinner and all you do is puns and dad jokes at me. Uh, you know, that's where I get tired of it. But the truth is, of course, I, I appreciate it, respect it. And listen, I've been spending a lot of time in my life writing jokes. And so a lot of it is finding the wordplay. For example, I mean, one simple thing that I've been doing lately with the teenager stuff is, you know, your kid's phone's tracker goes off when she's out mm -hmm. at night. Did her phone, is her phone dead or is she dead? Is she ditching class or is she lying in a ditch? I mean, it's a you have fun to game. play with that. We, we used to play the same game, hipster or homeless, kind of the same same sort of thing. Is is this person, is this tweaker looking person a hipster? Oh, this, yeah. this beardo. No, I love that. Or is he homeless? Is my daughter dead or is she her phone dead? Right. Sort There's so the many same. fun opportunities in life to uh, to wonder and, and guess uh, what's going on there. I was just saying it's fun sometimes to play around with language, and a lot of times that's where the funny is, is in the flipping of language, Andrew, and in the puns. But also hipster to homeless, man. Listen, I hang out with comics. That's a real, that's just my every night. I literally see p homeless people walking on East Colfax, and I think, oh, there's Jeff's, Jeff's coming to the mic. Oh, that's not Jeff. That's a homeless person. Shout out to Jeff. He doesn't look so homeless right now, but in the month January, it was a known thing, and I said it publicly, including at roasts. He was looking a little homeless, but he's cleaned it up a little bit. Good. Yeah, yeah I'm good. glad to hear it. There's also, uh, I've, I've had occasion to play this game once in Las Vegas, which is 
uh, is that his wife or his daughter? Oh, gross. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, I saw a little bit of a Maui one time recently. Interesting. Yeah, so being an adult, though, I'm just saying that's a, I mean, you're opening, it was supposed to hurt my feelings. No, it was very I just sweet. never know. Sometimes you go, that was a mean one. And I go, oh, was it? I didn't, I didn't grok that it was mean. Um, but boy, I just feel like a super adult because of the amount of snow I have been shoveling and the amount of uh, breaking up ice and dealing with gutters. Your, your yard, I think you must have been hit so much worse by the storm than my neighborhood was. Uh, granted, most of my neighborhood Feels is commercial, like and there's there's people on ATVs doing the sidewalks and totally stuff. Totally right. You have little elves cleaning up any amount of dust or snow that you would ever have to walk on. But we, I mean, in the last week, we've had more than a foot of snow. Oh, my God. Well over a foot. Mm-hmm. I have snow. I have gone out so many times. And it's been light and fluffy, thank God, because I haven't hurt my back shoveling. It really has been light, fluffy snow. I don't think you're in the demographic, but it's this this kind of, uh, this time of year when middle-aged yeah. men just start keeling over I know it. shoveling snow. Well, and the ironical thing, kind of, it's not really irony at all, but the interesting thing is that the number of mornings, including this morning, the walk that you walked on this morning to come to my front door, I wake up and Rafiki's beat me to it. Really? Yes. So she must be fully recovered from her uh, her broken foot. Oh, she's long long time recovered. So she, but I mean, she beats me to it. She shovels my front walk almost every single day. She is eighty years old. Sunday, I got up and I was like, "Oh, sweet, she hasn't gotten to it yet." So I went over and did hers real fast. It's like, oh, (laughs) she got me. And um, oh, also last night, she invited me recently. This is my eighty year old neighbor, and we've talked about a lot. She she invited me a while ago. Like Lisa, what kind of beer do you like? And I said, I like all kinds of beer. And then she's said a couple of times, like, maybe some night you can come over for a beer. And I was like, yeah, I really should. And I've thought about, like, reaching out on a variety of nights. Like, the other night the Oscars were on. And I thought I should go over and have a beer with Rafiki. Didn't. Sat back here and did a bunch of audio recording in my studio. But last night I called and I said, hi, are you home? Do you want to have a beer? It's snowing again. And I'm about to. I just can't take any more snow. And I'm staying in tonight. Do you want to have a beer? She was out for hamburger out for a hamburger with some people she went to school with. I was oh, that's so, great. It was so cool. Like, sorry. <laughs> you thought you thought that she would just be uh, over there yes, twiddling her thumbs exactly. waiting for you to accept her invitation. I loved it so much. She's like, well, I'm out getting a hamburger, Lisa, with some people I went to school with. So, uh, love it. I was so psyched. <laughs> like, her social calendar couldn't quite make room for me that night, and I was really happy. If only we could all be as uh, well-adjusted and, and popular as Rafiki. Holy cow. And able to mow, shovel all of the walks. She's 80. I mean, but that's how you stay young. I mean, we've talked about it. Her body, man, I look out my window and she is hauling brick with a hand truck or she is d- digging a ditch or she is doing something. She never rests. And anyway, she puts me to shame. It's emb- And I think I really feel very proud of the I'm – ta- I'm doing a good job of taking care of my house, right? I mean, I really feel pretty proud of it. And <laughs> the dollhouse she puts looks me great. to shame. The dollhouse looks great except for the gutter issue. I just never – Knew in my life how much time I would stand here staring at the gutter and thinking about slope and jerry rigging systems and uh, I got a, I got some issues with gutters. I really, it is. really no do. no one who's buying a house thinks, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to spend a week of mental energy thinking about gutters. Well, and the weird thing is that even if you did, the gutters on this house are are under warranty. There's this wonderful company, and um, so. I really specifically thought I will never have to worry about gutters. Mm-hmm. You thought you had, you had uh, about gutters. earned it with your warranty. I or, really did. Earned the right to not think about gutters. That's right. And, and it, That's and a it's, service. Mm-hmm. Before we get too far, I want to check in. We just checked in on Rafiki, and I've got another uh, old-time... What's our podcast name? Half My Age yeah, Character to bring is. back. A, oh, little, yeah. a little update. Whiskers. Oh, yeah. We think we've we've figured out the issue, kind of. We, we have a solution. We don't have a diagnosis. Uh, there's a lot of people who say that cats, particularly this breed, are allergic to everything. And they, they show it in their skin. Yep. Yeah. And instead of trying to figure, you know, we, we thought we were trying to figure out what the allergy was by changing the food and mm-hmm. changing the... All these things. Well, he could be allergic to dust. He could be allergic mm-hmm. to anything. We just started medicating him. He gets half of one of my allergy pills. He and I are on the same allergy pill because we're allergic to each other. How sweet is that? That's very sweet. But our love perseveres. Gross. And 
It's okay. We don't touch. You said gross so. and I like that's the new. That's the new. That's how we should respond. That's our new improv. Because how many times do you feel like that about me? Gross and a lot, right? Uh, gross and wait, was that your own? solution or did you read that somewhere or is that veterinary approved i don't care i just want to that know. is veterinary approved it is it is veterinary approved uh from the internet we didn't sure. we didn't take him to the vet okay i love it that says a lot about delaney and i in that we were so delaney focused and me i'm just gonna click i i hear it when i record i i sure I cut it, it, I it says it says a lot about it. us too me i all of us in here I was too too busy focusing on finding the uh, identifying the clear problem. Yeah. In order, and this this happens at doctors all the time. They're like, mm-hmm. "Well, that looks strange. Why don't we throw some antibiotics at it?" Yeah. Uh, sometimes you just need to throw a pill at it, which is so counterintuitive because everyone's always complaining about how people and things and every you know they, were over medicated. But sometimes you just need a little Zyrtec in the morning. Okay, that is interesting on so many levels. You're right. I My first thought is always to go try to do it without medication just because I've had some bad experiences with my life for real on being over-medicated. And excuse me, runny nose. Been shoveling, Andrew. I did take my allergy pill this morning, but I've been out shoveling. It makes everything water. So I'm going to try to be less sniffly, but it's not happening. But it's a cat, so I don't give a shit how much we medicate it. That's fantastic. Well, in an a allergy cat pill seems harmless. It totally, I love this. But I mean, you're right. Figuring out, going through the machinations of honestly, what you have done for so long. Oh, is Whiskers allergic to cat food? Is he allergic to this? Is he allergic to that? Taking things out, all the experimentation that you have done, keeping the spreadsheets, testing out, uh, you know, new hypotheses. This seems exactly right. Treat the problem. Treat it. It doesn't mm, matter the symptoms. what. Treat the symptoms. Exactly. Sorry. Doesn't need, we don't, it's like we discussed last week that I don't need to understand why people behave how they behave. And that makes everything better for how I get through life. We don't need to understand why Whiskers is allergic to things. But if there's a pill that helps him, hallelujah. Okay. Is he really not licking anymore? He's not licking. His, uh, his spots are healing up. They're so growing So that was fur. a matter of he was itching. Mm-hmm. And so in oh, I, I did read before before I decided to give him half of a pill, which seems insane because I am more than ten times right. the weight of this cat <laughs> yeah, and I only does. take a whole pill. Yeah. So you would think that he would take, you know, a tenth. Right. But he only he, he gets a half. Apparently that's not something that uh the doses changes with your weight. Right. It's like a Sudafed. Uh a yes, large yeah. adult gets the same as a baby. Yeah. Um, if you can give baby Sudafed, probably you don't. Can't. Probably don't give baby Sudafed. No, listeners, mean it. He I'm not mean a doctor, it. Just, as you can tell. Example. It took uh, it took more a than baby. a year to diagnose a cat. I am a cat allergy. The n- amount of time, I mean, like right there, you're explaining about. Well, I looked it up and thinking the amount of mental energy you've spent, I've spent on gutters. You spent thinking about medicating a cat. Mm-hmm. Mm, I feel bad for you. It doesn't seem worth it. I, I guess I never got to my point. The interesting thing about pet allergies, uh, at least with cats, in, uh. Humans tend to exhibit allergies in their lungs and in their, like, you know, your nose. Respiratory. And, yeah, mm-hmm. your, your mucousy areas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And cats exhibit allergies in their skin. So do humans. Yeah, but it's— I mean, no it's, doubt about it. I had the, a skin outbreak primary, allergy. It's their primary, you know, whiskers yes, makes me wheeze. Yeah. And I make him itch. No, I get it. But I just— I'm interested that the whole time it was just an itchy skin because we you, you thought it was what like an internal thing. A million things. We thought it could have been like a parasite or a and a bowel thing or something. Mm-hmm. And oh god, it doesn't matter. Good for whiskers. I'm really glad. Yep, he's doing great. Once his I'm not uh, once all of his fur is back, uh, he's making great progress, but he's not there yet. But once all of his fur is back, he will be show art. Will you be able to hold him in your say engagement photos? Uh, maybe. He might be photo worthy finally. Because you wouldn't want to take a picture of that cat otherwise. And if you do hold him in your you, engagement you know photos, that I, don't like I wouldn't to touch. enjoy that. I, I don't want to hold that cat. I know, but Delaney likes him, <laughs> is my understanding. Uh, I had uh, I got a rash this summer. I mean, we might as well just keep it keep it Gross, real. and... Exactly. See, am I doing it right? Undateable. Um, <laughs> I got a rash this summer, and it became... I mean, it was a heat rash, I'm pretty sure. Honestly, we... We certainly talked about how hot we were here in the studio, and the dollhouse was very warm, and I just overheated. Honestly, it was wherever I wore clothes, which was basically my swimsuit, because I had been out in the yard and stuff. So my swimsuit and, like, squirt area was just covered with a rash. And gross part sand. of it, Gross sand, man. Oh, it was so <laughs> gross and and embarrassing. Just like, what the? You, and it didn't really even itch. It was just this, like, anyway— 
Then it did it. But I went to the doctor and it was interesting because, I mean, yes, and it was a, for sure, the heat had um, made it worse. Mm -hmm. But it was, okay, God, really, why would I admit this in public? You know what? The point is, the cream they gave me to fix it and the drug they gave me to fix it, it was the same with whiskers. We I, we stopped wondering what it was or what was causing it or where it really came from. I took, uh, what was it? A steroid, in fact, mm-hmm. um, which was not good for my brain. <laughs> good to know that that little, what is it called, do you think? Pre- whatever, prednisone. So f- yeah. I took whatever, three days of it or something. Oh, my God. I mean, I didn't sleep, but... Uh, it got rid of the rash and who cares what the rash was about or why it's gone. So it's kind of like that with whiskers and skin disease. Whiskers and I really, Andrew, have so much in common. I kind of wonder, now that I've gone through this uh, this Herculean epic uh, to, to solve this cat issue, Yes, I wonder if I'm eligible to test out of like a year of med school. <laughs> like if, if, if I can get my names of the bones, can I be a doctor now? I mean, no, but what I... <laughs> But what I want to know is if you instead, Andrew, after graduating this this year of your life, could please write me a thousand word essay on why Whiskers is worth having as a pet. I want to know about the joy he brings to your life. I want to know why that. I mean, that but then I realized like how Whiskers awful I is sound. worth having as a pet because he he's not that bad. You know, mostly I'm just playing a character. Uh, but he's worth having as a pet because without him, uh, perhaps I wouldn't have a fiance. Okay, that I get. Then I would like Delaney's essay on why Whiskers is worth it as a pet. Does he bring her joy? I mean, I really want to know. We do play the character on here where we say all the negative things about Whiskers and everything else. So I get that. But I'm not kidding. In my life right now, I don't understand what... I don't understand the net value of most pets. It seems like they cause more harm and frustration and time sucking then they are worth and i'm just willing to be swayed about that cat my friend's daughter just got a tiny new puppy who is so freaking cute that i want to squeeze it i mean that i kind of get i do mm-hmm. i could see i just bought myself a stuffed animal you did mm-hmm. what uh, what shape is your stuffed animal is it a giraffe bear? A bear and i was just holding it at a the teddy store. bear like radar mm-hmm and I was holding it at the store, and it's so soft. And I was petting it so hard. I went, "Just get this ten dollar thing for yourself." I was. That's an image that like I that I like to think. I, I'm envisioning you on an <laughs> army car, cot like Radar okay. O'Reilly yeah. with your thumb in your mouth and your bear hugged it's kind close. Kind of what it's like. Only it's on my big, big, big king size bed, just for little old me. Point being, I went. Am I about to see where there might be room for a little pet? DJ Roomba is still the perfect damn pet. So good. The other day someone was here and I said, I mean, I was actually reaching to my phone and doing it from the app, but I was going, DJ Room, but you need to be quiet now. Can you quiet down? Can you quiet down? And then I just turned it off and I went, thank you. Good boy. I, I will say I grew up in a house uh, with dogs. I know. And whiskers as a pet is so much easier than a dog. I get that. I get easy, but easy is not convincing me. Easy still tears up. Well, I'm not, I'm not convinced to, either. I, if I if I... <laughs> This one of the okay. many reasons we're friends is okay. because you and I both have no reservations about telling each other how how little <laughs> we like other people's pets. Okay, right. I I forget that about you. I forget that you actually are on my side with this one, and that of course it's worth it in a million year a million ways because Delaney loves that cat. Could you, Delaney? Could you please submit your thousand word essay to me? She'll do that too. She might. I'd read it on the air. Did you? Speaking of uh, thousand word essays, did you get your uh, save the date? Yes, it's on my refrigerator. I just want, I just want that to go on the uh, on on the official record that you did and ge- in, did I indeed did. Oh. get your save the date. However, yeah. however, as all things are, that's subject to revocation in the event that you cannot act. Uh, I know because act like I a, got it, an adult, and I loved it, and I put it on my refrigerator like you do, and I sent a picture of it to your bride mm-hmm. with little heart emojis. And I think she said something positive first, like heart back or cool or cute or something. And then she said, remember, it can be revoked at any time. For That's right. Behavior. She and I were a team we're on the and same page. And I said, that is some bullshit, which is exactly what I said on her podcast. <laughs> uh, I said, so, such bullshit. That's such bullshit. In the, in the Obviously, theme of pets, I will be you're hit. on a very short leash. <sighs> <laughs> I know. Well, fine. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I'll be the life of the party if you want me to be. So I would say in my life, you fill a a role akin to a mother. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about 
uh, why we're friends mm-hmm. because I have an excellent mother. I don't mm-hmm. need another mother. You really do. But one, one of the great things about you being my pseudo mother is that you're not my mother. I don't, I don't have to. You can't embarrass me. Right. Right. Because I'm not your child. Right. You can't and embarrass vice me. vice versa. Right. Exactly. So you, you can, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not worried you'd show up at the wedding and embarrass us. I'm worried. I guess I'm not worried about anything. I'm mostly just I'm razzing not. you. Exactly. You're not worried about anything. You will be delighted to have me there. It will be a goddamn honor, Andrew. <laughs> right? I know. Well, exactly. And same, that, that's definitely the function I have served, which is remember things like hitchhike barefoot to Prague. And then you went missing, went dead for two days, five days. And I said, Andrew, I'm not, I'm not your mother, but I'm a mother. So please don't, you know, freak me out. But that was also part of it, I think, was the compulsion, especially at that age, to tell someone. To know that someone cared uh, if you were alive or dead, but you're certainly not going to reach out to your mom in that case. It's nice to have people in our lives like that. It sure is. I know. I'm a delight. I really just <laughs> a delight. I serve. Hey, uh, speaking of which, I won't do this at your wedding, but I just got invited to submit a bid for doing stand-up comedy at the end of the month in Boulder, Colorado for a 25-person dinner party. Wow. I know. And I don't know enough about it yet, so I can't answer. I, I got it through that, that app that we talked about last week. This sounds like John Roderick. It sounds like playing, <laughs> uh, you know, putting your band together to go play at some Microsoft executive's mm-hmm. house mm-hmm. for is. his, for his uh, 65th birthday. It, right. Right. <laughs> and that's what I don't know. The only thing I know is that the demographic said 25 to age four, age 25 to 40-ish. So I wrote back before I can even submit a bid, like, are you looking for... I mean, what's the occasion? Honestly, is it a is it a birthday party? Are we roasting something? Right. So I don't know yet. So I cannot possibly. I mean, I can tell you how much I charge, but I can't even know if I want that gig. Right. Um, you say that's in the Springs. Joke. No, Boulder. Boulder. Okay. The Boulder opposite. On Saturday. It's the night. exact opposite of the Springs, both no, in direction yeah. and mm-hmm. in uh, political leaning. Yes, correct. <laughs> I have a show in Boulder on Saturday night. Wow. And then you're speaking- busy. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. I don't want to jinx it. Uh, the the voiceover work I've been getting some jobs and um, it jeez it, the the truth is right now I'm just auditioning and I'm submitting a bunch of auditions and I get more than I can handle invitations to audition and I think there is a gaming part of this within the app where they're hiring me you know mm-hmm. like I think the more reviews I get and the more jobs you get you know the more looks you get um I have a question about this for you uh but. It just sort of feels like the only thing limiting my ability to make money is just how much do – it feels like completely within my control. I can sit here for hours and submit, you know, 30-second auditions. I can do it very easily thanks to this studio. Boom, boom, boom. The percentage of auditions I send versus jobs I get right now is still insane. It's it's really imbalanced. Mm-hmm. And I, probably I will get better at pinpointing jobs I think I will get or jobs that are more valuable. But this is worth it. This is not – we talked about Upwork before and it was shite. This is real and I'm – I've already – I mean, I'm making money. Um, however, Andrew, they want me to send my banking information via email. Yeah. Does that sound right? <sighs> this This is something that – I've got a story here, and right. this makes me so uncomfortable. So you realize that at the bottom of every check is your account number and your routing number. Yeah. And with that information, I can take an account number, a routing number, yeah. and a name. I can pay my water bill. I can pay my credit card. I can do all these things with yeah. that with that little bit of information. Uh, but moral of the story is someone someone asked me, there was a business I was doing business with, mm-hmm. and they sent me their accounting, their account number and their routing number, and I was going to send them some money. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't do that through my online tool. I've got an online bank that I use and I like, and they're generally pretty good. If I want to, um, you know, move money around my own accounts with many different providers, this since they're online first, the tools are super good for for making these transfers and doing these things. But I was uncomfortable setting up their bank account as a transfer destination in my banking app. I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to cross any boundaries. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Want, I, I don't want to be in a situation where I hit submit and accidentally pay my credit card with their bank account. Right. That would be super bad. Shit. Yeah. So uh, moral of the story, I can – the only way that I could send the money with this piece of information is I could wire the money. Yep. Uh, and I was like, no, I'm not going to pay 30 extra dollars for right. this. This is insane. So what I had to do is um, I went to a local branch of their bank and I wrote out a personal check 
And I took it to the person and put their account number on the deposit slip. And I, I just deposited the check for him. And the reason I did this is because I didn't want to send the check in the mail because it's going to a P.O. box and the P.O. box may not be checked regularly. And it's the, and the of hassle late, of you mail. Know that, and you know that packages and things get lost in the mail. Mm-hmm. R- lately, you've been real, made real keenly aware of that. So I'm, I'm hyper sensitive and hyper conscious about, you know, I, I don't want to give them a check because then my account number and my routing number's on it. And that all just makes me so uncomfortable. And it's, it's so insane that this, this major component of our lives, this whole entire financial aspect of our lives yeah. is dependent on these two numbers that we give out to everyone. Right. So my recommendation for you, yeah. um, if they want you to send them your bank information, yeah. is I would create a a uh, new account that's just for incoming deposits. When oh. money comes in, you sweep it out immediately so there's nothing there for them to take. Make sure that the uh, automatic, uh, what is it, the overdraft thing is disabled so they can't take out any money if there's not any money. Uh, that, that's what I would think is the safest way to do it. But it's a pain in the ass. It's- I was just going to say, I kind of believe you. That sounds pretty brilliant. And I go, golly, the chances of me doing that Taken that that involves banks. <laughs> well, I will tell you. So the the bank that I use and I like is Capital One. Yeah, and I don't like it. I I can create a new account in five minutes, and it's huh. ju- it's just there. It's got its own its own account number. It's separated from the other accounts. Uh, in in my situation, it's it's not a heavy lift. And that would be like you would create a, a checking account. I would create a checking account. I have Capital One because uh, upon your advice, we got it for international travel. We have a son that lives in France when I've been, right? I have that. Mm -hmm. I have had issues with that Capital One. Uh, Of what nature? I'm trying to remember. Access and sharing the account with Augie. Mm -hmm. And then Augie this summer, uh, spring, when he was getting his student visa, and a lot of it is proving that you have enough money. there were some issues. I don't remember. It felt like access. It felt like the opposite of what you just described, which I know is that, that the online portion of it was really easy and you just, it was, it was lickety split. Something about it was funny. Maybe I should go look at that and just do that and set it up because I remember setting it up the first time was easy peasy lemon squeezy. Mm-hmm. Do you have to put money into it first when you start it? Well, if you've already got a Capital One account, I would imagine you can transfer but five bucks over. But I was just over. saying that I might do the opposite. I might go and somehow try to create... Augie's and mine are tied together, mm-hmm. and they don't need to be anymore. So I think I have given him full sort the of account. access privileges. Sure. Yeah, because it needed to be done. There was something about that. Like he couldn't. So I may just go and create my own new yeah, version. It, and that, uh, that's pretty easy. I use, for me, Capital One is like the hub. I've got an investment account. I've got some business accounts at other banks. And Capital One's web interface makes it super easy for me to pull money out of the business accounts and put it in the investment account. Hmm. It's kind of the the postmaster of my whole financial That's interesting. And a, enterprise. I just got another thing I want you to look at inside before you leave. You've asked me. We actually had a really eventful morning. Uh, I walked I into the studio, and then Ugh. you followed shortly after, and you said, there's a paper towel out here. Mm-hmm. I think there's a dead mouse under it. Can you move it? Mm-hmm. Which I did. Uh, and then today we're recording one day before Valentine's Day. Uh, some there's There's all kinds of Valentine's Day on day things on sale. And of course, Delaney and I are in the market for wedding rings. I didn't uh, know that was a thing. Please note. I was like, what do you mean? Didn't you already give her a ring? Well, you, you know, said she needs another ring. As a, as a comedian, mm. you should know about the three rings of marriage. It's kind of like a circus. But you've got your engagement ring, mm-hmm. your wedding ring, and your suffering. That's, oh, a, that's yeah. a real comedic bit. See, I just never, it doesn't matter. I'm not a ring person, so I didn't get a second ring. Go ahead. It's you ordered of, it today, is what your point is. You sat here. I ordered and you it this morning. A transaction I, I, just after I picked up the dead mouse. Was it very expensive? I don't. It's relative, I suppose. I know. To what? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just all of it. But yay, she got the. She's getting the ring she wanted. She sure and is. And I also shoveled and chipped ice this morning, as I said. And what were we talking about? Oh, I've got something else for you to look at. I've got a lot of projects for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have something that just arrived from my Tia Craft account. TIA about my retirement and some changes made to my retirement account. Mm -hmm. And they sent this very thick envelope, which by the way, I opened, right? I didn't just put it in the fire without looking at it because I'm not (laughs) sure that they send me (laughs) online versions as I am with Charles Schwab. But 
Anyway, I just want you to look at it because it seems like something I don't really have to read. It's saying that there are these changes to the way that I will be charged for my retirement, this particular retirement account. And 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 they're, then they're saying, to make this information clear for you, we are going to now present it in two parts. None of it's clear. I don't. I have a feeling it's something that doesn't matter. They're required to tell me this. There's nothing I can do about it. But what? But the way it's framed is, we're we're giving you this information so that you can make better choices about how you manage your money. And I'm going, as far as I know, that's going to sit there until I retire, and I don't touch it, and I just let it be, right? I don't know. You, you, you might uh, you might look at it if they're charging you money. Uh, you you may find that you want to move that money somewhere else where they're not going to charge you. Great to know. Because uh, odds are they've just got it sitting in some um, index funds anyways. Uh-huh. And you might as well, if it's going to be an index funds anyway, you might as well have it in ones that have no fee. So is that something I should just call my financial guy about? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think so. I'll send him that thing. I've been talking you may to him you may have a big uh, <laughs> you may have a big financial week between making bank accounts and moving uh, <laughs> moving retirement plus accounts then taxes. And... You know what? I'm excited to do my taxes. Oh my goodness, I'm not. <laughs> I am because I it uh, I don't think it's going to be that big a deal because I'm not going to you know whatever itemize for every little thing because I didn't um, nothing in this year was registered as whatever so doesn't matter. Sole proprietor. But it's the first time I'm going to have to deal with mortgage. And then like I get stuff in the mail that says, um, the mortgage is nice. For sure. I don't know how it all works. I just, I, it, I get stuff in the mail that says, hi, you need this for your taxes. And I go, okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, I need proof of my health insurance for my taxes. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. And I don't want to be mean here, but you also had a year with not a lot of income. Exactly. So, so it should be a very small number. I feel like it. That's what I feel. Exactly. Exactly. Right. However, it was interesting to get a couple of the W-2s, is that what they're called? Mm-hmm. From the voice stuff, I, I did make some money that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, more than I thought. You and know? if it's a W-2, they've already withheld taxes. I don't know. You can get, so this is an instructive <sighs> piece of uh, American tax, whatever. Uh, generally, you get W-2s, which are for employees, and you get 1099s for contractors. And I would bet that the things you're getting are 1099s, but I'm not sure. You're probably right, which they didn't withhold taxes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Correct. It's 1099s. That's why I was asking. But I'm getting some papers in the mail. I mean, I um, it's not that I haven't filed taxes before. And I filed self-employed business tax one year that was like two years in a row I did it. And that was like hours and hours of like really detailing and itemizing. And my our tax guy was A++ work. He was so proud of he me. He was blown away. He's like, you didn't have to do any of that stuff. Exactly right. Exactly right. But it, but it taught me a lot. So this year, I'm just telling you that I'm excited to do my taxes. It should be small numbers. It's just interesting. I... Can't tell you how happy I am, Andrew, that it feels interesting to me and not panicky to me. Right? That's cool. It is a nice change. It's a nice change. We'll see. It might become panicky. I also feel like I can do it by myself. Yeah, you totally can. I, I feel like I don't have to hi- pay someone to do my taxes. Is that wrong? Nope, that's not wrong. Though with tools like uh, TurboTax, it's super easy. I think- Especially, I mean, you, you don't have a particularly complicated situation. Mm-mm. Was your divorce last year? Yeah. So you don't even have that to deal with anymore because you already took care of it. I think so. I mean, the official divorce was in March. March of 2019. Oh, maybe you, do, you would have so to deal with So we might have it. to deal with some stuff. I, I don't there. know how that complicates things. I can't imagine it's too bad. I don't think it's too bad. That's my point is that I, I may be, well, I'm definitely Pollyanna about it right now because I think I kind of can't wait to do my taxes. Like maybe in a week I'll do my taxes. It I is, think it it is very nice to to finish that and have it off your plate. I don't get why people delay it so much. It's another thing people uh, people talk about as being a, yes. a sign of adulthood is taxes. Yes. I pay yeah, taxes. Yeah. Right. Oh, and also um, the only two things you can't escape in life are death and taxes. Mm-hmm. The legitimate funny line too. There are there are certain people. Uh, in, in my upbringing, I spent a lot of time around like uh, shade tree car mechanics and that sort of thing. And these people... Uh, they'd work a job and then they'd get fired and they'd go work a job. They'd be back in a month because people's memories are short and they needed money and cars needed to be fixed. And these people bragged about not paying taxes. And somehow they seemed to get away with it. But I think they had uh, much larger uh, things to be in prison for that taxes never came up. It was kind of the opposite of Al Capone, who all they can get him on is his taxes. And these people, they can put him away for so many other things. The taxes are the the lowest on the list. you could have put Al Capone away for... A multitude of things. They just didn't get caught. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's face it. Wait, back 
up. There are people in the world who don't pay taxes. I get that. And weird. I know for a fact that if I was to not pay taxes, I would be arrested immediately. Interesting. I was just listening to a long pl- podcast, probably Planet Money, about the likelihood of getting caught. It wasn't Planet Money. Likelihood of getting caught at doing something wrong, breaking a law is actually what prevents more people from breaking a law than, like, the punishment. Sure. I believe yeah, that. Yeah, right? So Granted, I, just I have say, no idea what the punishment would be for— they probably just ask you to pay well, the taxes Al Capone you did in jail, like you just said, so— Yeah, but he was—I I mean, he was uh, he, I'm sure he, he owed <laughs> millions in back But, taxes. I mean, that's one of the things. that Like, we've seen an actual punishment for it. And the, Anyway, I would like to back up to—what is a shade tree mechanic— so this, uh, my my grandfather's a landlord and he owns a car lot. And uh, over the course of my childhood, many people have rented this car lot. Um, and I spent a lot of time down there. I would wash cars uh-huh. and just do general kind of car lot chores. Um, they rent it? He rents the car lot to people who sell cars. I see. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and there's there's a host of characters down there. And many of them go in and out. You'll you'll see them for a time. They'll they'll be around the car lot for a couple months, and then they'll get in a fight with the guy who who owns the business. I see. Uh, and then they're gone for for a couple of years, and then they come back. And they're like working as mechanics there mm-hmm. on the car lot. Right. And the the difference between a shade tree mechanic and a a mechanic mechanic is that they may not have all the certifications. These are these are handy guys who have been mechanics forever, but you don't know if they're gonna, you know, show up at nine. Mm-hmm. You don't know if they're okay. gonna if they're gonna leave at noon and, and drink beer for the rest right. of the day. Uh there's there's kind of a uh informal <laughs> whether the the owner wants it or not, there's kind of an informal arrangement about right. what these people are gonna do and when they're gonna be here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see. They're kind of versus me- the mechanics mechanic when who they puts need money. on. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I understand. I love that shade tree mechanic. They, yeah, I mean, drifters. They, that's yeah, I get it. And that's exactly the person you're talking about who doesn't pay taxes and who gets through life that way and doesn't maybe have a job that doesn't pay cash most of the time. Yeah, I know some people like that. Yeah, I can't imagine not paying my taxes. I can't even. Well, whatever. It seems naughty. I mean, I like, don't even like resent not, taxes that much as as much as most people do. Not only are you. Um, Doing something illegal, but you're also depriving the the schools and the you know the the people who need it. One thing I don't know if every county does this, but I know Denver does. When you pay your property taxes, they give you a breakdown of how those taxes are allocated and apportioned. Oh, that's nice. Um, and the the biggest ones, the biggest uh, sections of the pie chart in Denver are going to the schools, which makes me happy. If if you're gonna right. if you're gonna collect taxes. And you're going to spend it on governmenty things. I'd prefer it to be schools. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Obviously, and also roads and stuff. Listen, I, oh, here's one. Uh, I'm happy also for the police services, living where I do. Um, but last week I was out to lunch with my financial guy, and I was way down in Park Meadows, so that feels a million miles away. And That's it where was I grew snowing. up. I know it. And anyway, we we're in the middle of lunch, and I got a call from my security system. And I picked up and said, hi. And they said, yeah, your alarm is going off right now. And I also then saw it on the app. Your kitchen door is open. And I said, well, I'm not home. So, yeah, that seems alarming. I mean, yeah, dispatch. Then they called me back and said, we can't. We called the Denver Police Department and they won't come because you haven't pulled a permit for, you haven't registered your system. And I went, what now? I can't believe that's on you. How is how is the company who's selling me you the too. system? <laughs> How are they not pulling that permit? And why? And also, if it's something that the homeowner just has to do, why don't they? How tell about you? tell me? Sure. Boy, I also was can't I believe. Mad. So imagine. I mean, granted, I was over at the dollhouse. I walked through it on my way to the atelier. Uh, it didn't seem to be burgled. No. Uh, but granted, if there was a burglar, I can't believe the cops would say, "You know what? You don't have a permit. We're not going to protect you." I was a little surprised by it myself. Uh, in fact, what they said to me, the security says, I called on the way. I, so I was like, lunch was just about over. And I went, well, I guess I better get home. I suspected what had happened. Um, this has happened before when I've been home. Uh, my kitchen door, unless I really pull it tight and make sure it's locked, the inside door, it can blow open. And it was, snow was starting to come down. It was the beginning of our two weeks of blizzards. Um, and I knew I had locked the outside security door, but you know, it's, got holes in it screen door so i just suspected that's what it was because 
I looked at my cameras and there was no event. Like it didn't appear that anybody had approached the house from backyard or front yard. I would have it on camera, you know. Uh, I called Rafiki. She wasn't home. I was like, I think that's what it is. Also, it was 15 degrees outside. So then I figured if my door had blown open, I mean, my heat, you know. Um, anyway, they did say the security system. I was sort of on the phone. And again, I was driving on a snowy day and I was on the phone going, what the fuck? And they said, let us give you this number to DPD and and the Denver Police Department will at the very least stay on the phone with you until you get home if you're worried that something has actually happened. And the truth is, I think I could have called the police myself and said, please go check. I mean, I've I've called before. I, I could have called a crime in progress line. You know what I mean? But I know that was weird to me and I don't understand what the relationship is there it maybe they're just so sick of security systems i don't know anyway i did call the non-emergency number and said what's the deal with this and she said oh yeah you have to pull a permit let me give you the number to call and i said well i'm driving i'll deal with it later so i dealt with finally dealt with it yesterday it was the easiest thing it took less than 10 minutes on the phone it costs 25 dollars a year i do need to have the permit the security system they need to have the permit number on file Whatever, whatever, that's the rule. I don't care, it's 25 bucks a year. That doesn't even bump me. Fine, have my $25. Why didn't just someone tell me? (laughs) But I got it done. So that's another point where it's like, that's where our taxes go and it'll be fine and now they'll come. I don't know why it has to be that way, but... There's a lot of things in life and especially in adulthood uh, that no one tells you the rules until you've broken them. Seems like it. A lot of things in childhood too. Mm Mm-hmm. That's interesting, Andrew. It's a very it's a, it's kind of how we how we learn, I suppose. But if if you were told all the rules up front, you probably wouldn't have enough mental capacity to really to wouldn't. take it all in. No, if, of course not. If you're trying to figure out your mortgage on your new house and you're you're doing your inspections and all of the stuff that goes into a new house, the last thing you're going to remember is, oh, by the way, and if you want the security system that's already installed to continue to work, you need to call. DPD or whoever does it, yeah, uh, and, and chat well, on them for ten minutes. It's- but here's the thing: as you're describing that, I think about how my realtor, in a way that I really appreciated, sat me down and said, "Here is the process of buying a house. I'm going to teach you. Here are the pain points. Here are the places where it can fail. Here are the places where you and I have to do something that really matters. Right? Mm-hmm. Here is the here are the places where you can lose your money. Here, you know, here, and and." And it was a lot, but she did it in a beautiful way. And it's something that she regularly does. Um, Okay, down to my handyman sat with me at the bidet installation party. He got sprayed in the face, if I recall. He he did, but he got sprayed. He held his arm there. And like, seriously, with a great deal of patience, and this is not a man who has words, uh, poetry, um, (laughs) his big muscles. Anyway, he sat there and said, like ran me through the cycle. He had read the remote control, um, you know, instruction manual. And I just appreciate it. And it was like, no, actually, I think the security system guys, when they came over here, they did give me a little tutorial because I asked them to. Like, come, I don't know how this all works and what are my options. And also, eventually, we installed this other alley cam. That seems like the, the, you're right that I was overwhelmed by a lot of input, but I was also a year ago in this mode of buying the house and going in discreet and, 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 um, intentional ways. Like this is my learning session with Mm -hmm. the house documentation, right? The, the previous, um, owners went around and showed me, I will never forget as I took the keys over that day and being so overwhelmed, he showed me how to turn on the light in the hallway. And I think it would have taken me months to figure it out. Super easy. It's just, the, it, it's it's not, it's not intuitive. And I probably would have thought the bulb was out. J- just stuff like that. But it's like, I'm here to learn. So I'm listening and I'm going to take notes, right? The security system, no, for real. They could have mentioned that as one of the things you have to do is pull a permit. Otherwise, this system is not, uh, what we promise is that an alarm goes off and, 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 and um, first responders come isn't going to happen unless you do this. And I went, okay, then. The other thing I don't get is that one time when my alarm went off, as you may remember, the fire department was just here. So that's what I don't get, even when I was trying to call them off, because I was sitting there trying to mess with it. It was a day we've talked about in the program, and I was, I mean, it was insane. The fire department just showed up when my alarm went off. So that's what I wonder, why didn't that happen automatically? I wonder if, uh, if 
fire events are different than police events. I mean, they why must was be. That a fire to, why was that a fire event? Here's what I, here's what I bet happened. When that happened in this summer, when, when my alarm was actually going off, we tripped the system. I was on the phone with customer service mm-hmm. for my alarm system. Meanwhile, they were trying to call me to confirm, right? Is this a real alarm or not? Which is what happened on Monday. And I said, yeah, sounds like a real alarm. But they made contact with me. And so probably then they took the step to like, I I just wonder if there wasn't something there that when I did not respond this summer, they also called my emergency contact. I know because Tal called me and said, I'm on my way. And I said, no, 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 no. (laughs) Um, And I was, and I wasn't getting along with Tal at the moment. So it actually stressed me out more like, damn it. Um, I forgot that he's still my emergency contact. Uh, I just, anyway, it doesn't matter. That's really so many details. Point being, I filed for, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what the point is. It felt <laughs> adulty, I guess. There you go. There's another thing. We got taxes. We got well, mortgage. I, I think we you got just permits. found the point, which is that there's no point. There's no point. So much All of this of stuff it, is just adulting. Yeah. Andrew. I, it's so far from uh, from weddings and funerals and the life parts of life. Right. And the I also feel sort of pioneer lately. Like the fact that the snow and ice just keeps coming mm-hmm. and I'm kind of burying out. And you're like, it, a, you're like a homesteader. You're, I feel uh, you're, like, you're yes. taming the, the wild, the great feels, natural yeah, resources. Feels a little, little house on the prairie to me out here. I, yeah, it really does. And I just see it coming down more like, wow, I'm going to have to get out and chop down some ice. I do want to tell you, I've missed my dad a lot lately. Just funny that that has come back. Um, but on Sunday, I woke up and just had fresh new hell to deal with gutters popping off because of, overflow of ice and whatever and i really had a feeling of mike lane and knowing that this is what my dad did his entire life and didn't complain about anything ever until the end when his dementia made him a little bit more unpleasant than he had ever been i don't know i just sort of put on my coat and went well it's a different kind of sunday instead of xyz i'm gonna be out there chopping up ice and shoveling snow and well, I'm going to have to figure out how to mitigate the problem with that gutter. Yeah, that's going to take some. And I just, I don't know. Uh, I was grateful that I had a body that can do that. I was grateful for this house that I still love. And realizing that the fact that it takes some time and investment, because a lot of people say that lately, like, oh, the joys of being a homeowner, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same. Oh, I'm adult. Yeah, I, it kind of sucks. But to me, it beats the alternative. Anyway, it was just kind of cool. And it felt like a Mike Lane gift to go don't bitch about it don't i was starting to feel like oh my god everything's happening to me my god i went literally nothing about this is bad owning a house is awesome for me and i i love it here and yeah it takes some work and i have the capacity to do that work so go do that work and also i got some exercise that is such a good attitude thanks man i have i have a hard time uh I have a hard time coming up with that attitude when there, when there's so many little small things that have to be done. I really have a hard time sometimes with that attitude. And often the small things are like banking and stuff. But again, I don't, my it's dad. It's funny how our small things are different. Oh, I know, right. right I, suppose, I suppose I react to home ownership chores yeah. in the same way you react to banking. Well, the funny thing is the summer and your father will, will concur. You were talking about how sometimes it's just great to get out and mow the yard. Mm-hmm. You were really longing for those homeowner chores, but that was just fake. That that's was true. A flex. That's, you were putting uh, that on. That's uh, longing for homeowner chores because I don't. There's not any real threat of me having to do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right, <laughs> right, right. Except that if your father or I go, why don't you come over and chip away at my ice? You can do some. You got homeowner chores all you want. Yeah, no, it is a good attitude, and I really, really, even with banking chores, though, I just think my dad really. I don't know what that was. I, I mean, listen, he drank a lot of beer, and so he kind of checked out from life every night. That's really the kind of drinker he was, the the drunk that he was. I mean, I I really think it's important to not um, mythologize a person. He was so not perfect. So there was probably deep pain in there that he didn't know how to deal with or something. And it was just kind of like, I'll check out. But the attitude of getting up every single day and he didn't bitch and complain. And he worked hard and he actually found literally so much joy. Gosh, Andrew, also this last weekend, you know, I was getting a lot of pictures on social media of people in neck deep pow pow and stuff. And that really made me feel my dad because, and I talked about it at the funeral, but I mean, I don't know, it really hit me this weekend. What a funny thing it is. And you just gave an opening in homage to this in my, whatever, I'm the living legacy. He would let us all ski down. He would 
I used to think my dad was impervious to cold because when my bindings would all get all packed up you know, on my skis, old metal bindings on ski boots, my dad would just take off his glove when my hands were too cold and fix it and brush snow out of there for me or whatever the heck it took. And I guess I just thought he didn't have feeling in his hands. You know, that's not what was going on. He just didn't bitch about it. He kept everybody safe. We would all ski down. He would make sure everybody's safe. And then my dad would come bumping down that mountain. And I mean, every time... My sister and I were talking about yeehaw. He actually yeehawed, <laughs> like out loud, as a grown man until his until he was past seventy. Who does that? Like yeehaw. I mean, the whole way down the mountain. It was like, um, that's adorable. So it I felt adorable. that. Yeah, I felt There's that. There's a lot of you in that. There's I, a lot of me in that. The yeah. the thing that made me write the opening I did about your joyfulness was uh, your your goofy ass little. Uh, video of you making a snow angel you love that kind of shit you what look for else it. would you do that's that's your yeehaw well it was right yeah and the funny thing is that i made that snow angel after i had done all the shoveling then i allowed myself to have the fun because donna was out shoveling and snow blowing and i was out and her granddaughter was over snow blowing there was so much snow so i shoveled and shoveled and shoveled and then i went oh, okay there's still a there's still an untouched field here to do it <laughs> i mean how could you not you know what else is funny right i grew up without snow for my earliest memory. Our little friends on Maui, when we went there a few years ago, our friend who was seven years old at the time, she asked me, are snow angels real? And I was like, that's a weird question, right? Like, what do you mean? Of course they are. So there's, there might be just something in a child who longed for snow to that moment of flopping into, I don't, how could you not make a snow angel? Don't you make, I don't know. I Seems haven't like made a what snow, snow angel in a for. very long time. It's weird. It just, I, it really is hard for me not to. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, it's so funny. <laughs> and the reason, my other point is the reason I did it at the end, it was a reward for my shoveling, but also then I knew <laughs> I was going to get wet. You know, you get all the snow goes down in your boots. You can even see in that dumb video my tummy showed. So, I mean, I was exposed a little bit. And then I knew I was going to have to go in and dry off and suck it up and whatever. So that was the end of playing in the snow. I just, oh, snow days, playing in the snow was so fun as a kid. Did you, you like to go out and play in the snow? I did. We like had snow uh, courts? my my parents' front yard is uh, it's got a hill to it. Yeah. So we would sled in the front yard, which was oh, great. Oh, cute! We'd build a little jump. Oh, fun! Yeah, it was awesome. That's so fun to build jumps on the sleds. I was never. I think we we tried many times to to have a snowball fight, and my my brothers and I were not particularly good at maintaining a snowball fight. Oh, there's so much work involved in making those oh. gosh darn. Snowballs. The other thing is that in Colorado, very, very rarely, including this storm, thank God it's been light snow. Have you heard John Roderick? Roderick did you hear him describe the different kinds of snow across yeah, the... Yeah, I did. So in Colorado, we really rarely have snowball snow mm -hmm. or sledding snow for that matter. I mean, you really have to work to pack that down and stuff. We rarely have good fort building snow. I mean, I remember, like, I remember from my middle school years and high school years and then my own children's years, the, the epic and few few and far between snowstorms that come in wet and they come in drifty mm -hmm. so that, you know, there's a place you can build a fort built on the side of the house or, or where you can pack a bunch of snowballs. It's really unusual here. So, but anyway, playing in the snow. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I had that, I had a different story. To, I was getting somewhere about thinking about my dad, but I'm it sorry, doesn't I matter. I'm sorry, I keep throwing you off. No, no, Andrew. We're just here to chit-chat. It's been we delightful. Sure I've had some listener feedback about our chit-chatting. And oh. uh, since since we've come back in season two, they seem to think that both you and I and the show are much more joyful. Oh! They've been enjoying it. Oh, oh that's and great. And I, I, uh, I think part of it is taking the time to... Uh, be away to to deal with the loss of your father. Yeah, uh, and it just just having a good break. Well, I also think that listen, uh, we could hear it in my voice every week the weight and heaviness of my father dying. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that that's what was exactly happening, but I that wasn't very joyful for anybody it's a stressful to listen time. to. Oh my god! I mean, in you know, in one year, I lost my husband and my father. And a boss that I didn't care for, a boss that was very difficult for me. Um, two of those were my choice to leave. Mm -hmm. My father wasn't my choice to lose him, but it also felt a little bit like I felt in a sort of psychic way involved in helping him go sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. So that was just an epic year. And as a friend of mine wrote me a card and said, hey, I noticed you've been getting a lot, of, getting rid of a lot of the men in your life. I, I hope you'll keep me around. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> what doesn't matter. Anyway, I just, yeah, it was a year of heaviness, and I do think there's more joy. Plus, you got engaged. That's joyful for everybody, Andrew. I got engaged. Golly. And we're, we've been doing this for a year. We've got a, a better sense of how things work. in we're professionals. And, oh, and also, can I just say, I am in, let's talk about, I am in such a different place than I was a year ago. Absolutely. Oh, oh I, w- I think about that sometimes. I, how very, very sad I what was. What a difference all the time. a year makes. Oh, my God. It seems like such a pleasant note to end this podcast. It seems on. rockacy, doesn't it? It sure does, Mrs. Fulham. It's nice talking to you. You too. Have a great day. Happy you Valentine's too. Day. Same to you. I'll see you next it's week. In the past. Okay, bye.